Hey guys, I'm Trent Bowers. I get to work as the superintendent of Worthington Schools. Um, and so really we wanna thank you for coming out um, to talk about the future of Worthington Pools, to hear a perspective from SWIM Inc., which is our nonprofit organization that has run the pools for quite some time. Um, and then to hear the city's perspective and the school district's perspective, um, it really is our goal. What we wanna do, um, we, we chose to start in the auditorium tonight because it's really our best presentation space. It has the best screen, it has the best microphones. Um, it's not the best space for us to have conversation or to get your feedback. Um, and so we're going to begin the meeting here, do part one of the meeting, and then we're gonna ask everybody to move from the auditorium down to the cafeteria for part two of the meeting so that really we can have a little bit of conversation in smaller groups and record your feedback. Because obviously, um, part of what we want from this meeting is your feedback. We wanna know what um, our residents are thinking about how we should solve this issue. Um, if, when, you, when we go down to the cafeteria, you'll see it's a tough space for us from a screen standpoint, from a presentation standpoint, and so therefore we're gonna go to two locations today. So. With that, um, I'm gonna introduce Mike Keller. Mike um, is the representative from SWIM Inc. and he's going to start us off tonight by explaining um, SWIM Inc, the history of SWIM Inc and where we are with the pools today. And then he'll turn it over to Matt Greeson, our city manager. Thank you, Trent. Uh, again, my name is Mike Keller. I volunteer on the SWIM Inc board um, and I presently serve as the chairman of the a facilities Committee. In 2020, I'll be taking over the role as president of the board, um, taking that leadership over from Rob, Rob Schmidt, who's been uh, in, um, in that leadership role for the past 14 years. So first, I want to thank Trent for hosting uh, this, this discussion tonight and, and Matt Grayson and the city for the discussions we've been having regarding the financing and our planning for the pool. And most especially everyone who's here tonight to uh, give their feedback on the discussion and the future direction of Worthington Pools. Um, I have a few slides that we're going to go through, Let's see if I can, um, and these will be available on our website, so I'm not going to read them verbatim, but um, they'll be posted on, our, on the Swim Inc. website, the Worthington Pools website for anyone's reference. Um, real quick, just down the hill and across the parking lot, we have our facility, um, which was funded by the community. If you look at the timeline, you'll see that uh, the support of aquatics that, that, that our facility supports aquatics for the city of Worthington and the, and the Worthington School District and has been a gift that was given to us from the previous generation, built back in the 1950s, natatorium built back in the 70s. You know, we are at the time where we're looking at that next generational investment um, a, as we move forward. Now, our goal right now with Swim Inc. is to work on how we're gonna reinvest in our facilities and pay it forward and continue to provide the community the continued enjoyment of the swimming facilities as well as the competitive instructional and recreational programming that we get to offer down at, at the, the Worthington Pool site. You know, hidden in this timeline, I think, is you know, the role the community has played over the past 65 years with Swim Inc. Um, the original pools were built by this community, by Swim Inc. The natatorium was built by the community with Swim Inc. Um, if you look at the overall capital cost of that facility, you know, about 90% of that has been the community, Swim Inc., our membership paying for that. Um, there's been contributions and coordination with the city um, over the past few decades and the schools um, regarding their space and improvements in the auditorium. So, but again, um, we, ha we have been and are a successful nonprofit that have been providing these aquatic facilities for 65 years to the community. Um, what we did over the past few years is, um, two years ago, we, we did a facilities plan to kind of assess the condition of our pools and our facilities. Um, this past year, we did a, a master plan vision um, to get input from the city staff, the school staff, and the public on what the framework of the aquatics complex should be for the next 30 years. So we're kind of pulling all this stuff together, we're getting numbers, and now we're at the point to kind of, um, we're, we're trying to find that intersection of the planning that we've done and the available funding within this community. Um, I think one of the things I, I look at is you know, if you look at the overall magnitude of the project, it's a lot different from 1972 when we built an auditorium for $185,000, you know. But I think as a nonprofit, you know, a lot of the, the funding is this, potentially exceeds what we can do alone. 
But I think as a community, what we've done in the past and what we were looking to do, I think we can pull together and, and pay it forward. So a, a little bit about um, who uses our facility and our membership, because I think that's a key thing when we look at it. You know, Swim Inc. has, has been structured, to, you know, our, our, our membership area is the school district with the city inside of that. So 55% of, of our membership for the outdoor poor pool is city residents. 80% are within the Worthington School District boundary. So the red dots and, 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 the, and the blue dots kind of show the red are, are the members and then the, the blue are guests. But you can see based on the, on the map, who do we serve? We service a, a large area um, and our, our, our outdoor pool is about, from that membership, about 80% families, 10% seniors, and then 10% uh, single membership. You know, the role we provide with the city and the school district is, you know, with, with the city, um, Worthington Pool is the only public outdoor facility within the city limits. So obviously it's a summer destination for, that a lot of us here have, have utilized. Um, for, for the school district, we operate and maintain the natatorium, which supports the swimming, the diving, and the water polo teams. Um, in a typical year, we also have about 220 youth that participate within the Worthington Swim Club, and an additional 250 members that participate on our, in our summer um, recreational uh, wave program. So there's a lot of folks within this community that utilizes not just the facilities, but the teams, the competitive nature of it. Um, and I think you see that within the community, within the schools, of what, what Worthington gets to offer. So planning for our future, you know, as, as, we, as we looked at this, um, really about 2015, we really started looking at what are we going to do and how, we, how do we maintain our facility going forward. You start looking at the age of our facilities, the operational costs, um, the regulatory challenges that, that um, we get in, and the amenities that we offer. You know, we're always competing against other uh, suburbs, other communities on what's out there. Um, these planning efforts um, have been mo moving under the radar for the past few years, and you know, they offer a lot of challenges for a nonprofit as we start looking at the magnitude of what we, what we get into. Um, so this kind of leads us to where we are today, kind of the fork in the road, where the, we, we kind of see the needs of the community and it kind of exceeds what Swim Inc. as a nonprofit can carry alone. But again, like I said, I, I think it's not too much for our community to support um, as we have under previous decades um, with, with the investment that we've made in the pool. Um, and I think that's why we're here tonight is to kind of see what, what the community is, is comfortable with. Um, you know, I'll share in, in a few slides kind of what our vision and concept plan provided us um, and, and kind of get some feedback on, on where to go forward. Um, in 2018, we conducted an overall facilities uh, inspection um, to benchmark what we owned. Um, I think the key there was we really wanted to know what infrastructure, what the condition of our facilities were before we started our planning effort. Um, there's a lot of words on here, of, of, but, but I think the common denominator is we have pools, outdoor facilities that are 65 years old. Our natatorium's over 40 years old. Picture any, any car, or any, any uh, house that with that age, you've got to start putting money back into it. Um, the, these, these facilities were built and, and the, the mechanics of them were built to different codes, different requirements. So as we go and we maintain them, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's an ongoing expense. Um, over the last few decades, you know, we've had great people working with Swim Inc. And, and that to ensure that this community asset is open to every Memorial Day. And I think you see through the quality of what we have out there and what we maintained, you know, we do an excellent job as a nonprofit on operating. What we're looking at now is, is that reinvestment. Um, this, this just slide just talks about some of the pool, the middle pool and the south pool and some, you know, the turnover rate, some of the regulatory, you know, some of these drivers which are driving, why do we need to reinvest? Um, we, two of our pools leak water, you know, so that, that, that there's operational costs there, um, plus that we treat that water. Every gallon that, that goes out underground through a leak, we're treating that water, we're heating that water. So these are expenses that we're losing right now with our facility and we can reclaim those with a newer, updated facility. Um, with that 2018 inspection, you know, the natatorium was, was a key component of that. Um, the indoor facility is 43 years old, and we feel that it's on borrowed time as we sit now. And it is the major reason why we're here tonight, because we need to think about the future of this asset, because it services so much of what we do with the city and the schools. Um, you know, with the natatorium, you know, the challenge is evaluating the cost to maintain the facility versus the cost to replace it. So after we did the, the assessment in 2018, we, in 2019, we did 
what we called the Worthington Pool Master Planning, which was the goal was to identify a vision for our future. Um, this is a living document that was produced. Um, we shared it with the, the, the school board and, and city council um, a month or so ago. Um, and it's a vision of what the community wants to become. Um, again, this plan was built off of involvement with the, uh, the school system, uh, with, with input from the schools, the city, and public outreach. We did some outreach to the schools, we did some outreach at the farmer's market, and then some questionnaires at, at the pool itself. So this plan requires significant investment for our facilities, and not just for the, the physical improvements, but also for staffing, for operation and maintenance um, going forward. So if you look at the exhibit, you know, you know this, this, I pulled out some graphics from the report, you know, rating our facilities, and as you would expect, you know, our bathrooms, changing areas, concessions, shade, toddler pool, some of the major things that, that people want to see upgraded. Um, also with that 2018 or 2019 plan, you know, one of the goals we had was to, to set it up to be flexible and adaptable. Um, you know, with, with some of the priorities being, you know, the zero entry pool for toddlers, new concessions, new restrooms, um, increased water features, play area, a lazy river, those type of things. Um, so pulling that forward, you know, we understand that having the plan in place, you know, we wanted to make sure that what we put together was that we can compartmentalize, we can phase it. Um, and then we also want to be able to work with the city and the school as the school is looking at Thomas Worthington improvements, how does our site fit into their master plan too? So you know, we did, we've got our master plan done this past year, you know, as, as these other, um, the city and the schools are looking forward, you know, we want to make sure these discussions and we're, we're talking together. So you know, what, what, what was the result of our, our visioning plan? You know, what did it include? This is a concept plan. I, I, I throw it up here because I think we need to see something of, of what, what we're talking about. Um, the, you know, the proposed improvements, you know, it, it includes uh, new, new building improvements for, for ticketing offices, restrooms, concessions, outdoor lockers, refurbished uh, um, and additional sh uh, shelters, uh, new mechanicals, you know, just, just the stuff you don't see when you're at the pool that, that takes a lot for operation and maintenance. Um, so what this plan generally shows is you know, a new toddler pool, you know, a, a, a rehabilitated or new middle pool, rehabilitated new senior pool, lazy river slides, and, and a new natatorium. Um, with our plan, we also looked at if, if that existing natatorium structure was still um, functioning, that could we repurpose that for some indoor um, training, indoor usage that, that also can serve the Worthington community. So, but again, with that plan, we wanted it to be to, to be able to uh, evaluate in phases so things could be constructed independently. So if we got to one part that, that if we stopped, it didn't look incomplete. Now our goal is that the outdoor facility, when we move forward with that, that could we do it in one phase? Um, but we understand there's a lot. The other side of the ledger is financing. Um, so that's, again, what we're, that's the phase we're in right now. So what does that vision cost that you just saw? Basically between 17 and $22 million. Um, the outdoor pool from, from the visioning and the concept plan is about $8 million. And the indoor natatorium for what we have shown is about $9 million. Um, so we're kind of at that fork in the road. Do we maintain what we've got or do we start reinvesting into the future of Worthington Pools? So when we talk about investing in the pools regarding the outdoor facilities, you know, what, what are we talking about? You know, it's demolishing or removing, you know, uh, the, the outdoor facilities pretty well everything except for the spray part. You know, what, what, what we're trying to do is we've got the visioning document we completed in 2000, this past year, and Swim Inc. is currently discussing how to right size this project. What's the, you know, so we've got an $8 million investment, but what's the right size that this community can afford? You know, we all in this room, be, be it school taxes, you know, or, or, or property, you know, we're all paying for these improvements. And it's the same, I always say it's same pair of pants, different pockets. Um, so. You know, what's, what's the right way to go about that? So what, what we're doing right now is we're looking at what's the right size of this project. And our goal is that could we get this down to a five to six million dollar investment? And this is a priority for us right now going into 2020 is to take that concept, get something a little more concrete that we can continue to bring forward to the city and the schools um, for discussion. You know, and I think one of the things where we focus on the outdoor pool is because our summer membership drives our finances. You know, our, our outdoor facilities make sure everything we do in that auditorium can be done. So that's why we need to make sure we get that done right and we keep that running, and, and then we can get that, that indoor facility working. 
or improved. Um, reinvesting on the indoor facility, uh, our master plan, we looked at it, was about $9 million is, is, is what it would cost to replace that facility with a 25 meter stretch pool, about 21,000 square feet facility. Now, one thing we always get is, what's the right number? How much is that natatorium gonna be? So I just kind of pulled some comparables that I saw that you know, over the past few months that, that are moving forward in different communities. You know, Margareta local schools have a pool and natatorium they're planning, similar to what we have. It's about $6 million, $6.5 million. Now, you always hear about the 50 meter pool. What could we do if we had a bigger pool? So down in uh, Center Grove, outside of Indianapolis, they just started construction on a, a hundred Olympic sized pool, therapy pool, kind of all the bells and whistles. So if you go to the opposite on the spectrum, you know, something like that, 17 to $23 million. But again, I just provide those to get perspective when you sit there and say, what do we want? What, what can we be? What does our community want? You know, I wanted to be able to throw that stuff out for people to consider. Again, from a Swim Inc. perspective, our, our mission is to support aquatics for the city of Worthington and the Worthington School District. That's our priority. And that's, that's where we reset. When we look at these visions, we go back to what our mission is. It's been very successful for 65 years. We want it to be successful moving forward. So uh, one thing I wanted to say regarding potential investments, we do have a million dollars that we secured um, state CIP funding. Um, and as, as we're planning, um, you know, that there might be, because of timing of finances, do we move ahead with a million dollar investment? Um, we're looking into that. On the same side, time, we're planning our outside, we're trying to coordinate what that future natatorium will be. We need to look, what do we need to do to address our immediate needs? Um, I think it's important for us to be um, good stewards of the finances that we get. Um, if there's opportunity to have the state CIP funding, let's put it in the right place, let, let it be part of the overall plan to move things forward. So, you know, where we, where we sit currently, you know, we're formalizing the planning for the outdoor. We're continuing to work with the school district uh, on the planning and siting and aesthetics of what that new natatorium can be. And then we're trying to leverage the state CIP funding. Um, you know, with that money, you know, we're trying to look at that, what that overall concept is and what could we invest in that could be the first stage that, that, that will be there and we can build around. Um, but again, because of the age of our facilities, how it was built, you know, there's a lot of challenges with that. Um, so with that as the basis, you know, I hand the conversation, I think it goes over to Matt um, and the city uh, uh, to provide their perspective on Worthing, what Worthington Pool is as an asset and, you know, the future of the aquatics for our community. So, um, Matt. Thank you, Mike. Um, I'm Matt Greeson. I'm Worthington City Manager, and I'm pleased that you're here this evening and uh, here to contribute to the discussion about Worthington Pools. Uh, I want to begin my remarks by offering some thanks. Uh, first, thanks uh, for being here on a weeknight. Uh, second, uh, thanks, Dr. Bowers, uh, to you and your team for hosting us this evening. Um, this is actually event one, and I'm heat two. Um, that's my only humor this evening. That's all I got. Um, uh, and third, I want to offer my thanks to uh, Mike and the Swim Inc. board. Uh, he and his team are volunteers um, who like many involved citizens before them, uh, have been giving a lot of their time to be stewards of Worthington's aquatic tradition. Um, and at this point in Swim Inc.'s 65-year history, there are some challenges and there are no uh, small tasks at hand. Um, and I'm personally appreciative of their volunteer service to this community. Um, so now you've heard some of the challenges with our pools and the need to reinvest in them. I'm going to share with you some of the things that the city will be discussing as we explore um, how uh, our role and how we can help solve uh, this important community challenge. And certainly, uh, we want your feedback when we move into the breakout sessions. It'll be very important. Uh, first, let me affirm one thing. Um, it is the perspective of the city of Worthington that Worthington Pools is an incredible civic asset where it sits, uh, the facilities, um, the aquatic opportunities that it offers um, the people who live here, uh, the unique history of Swim Inc. and uh, the volunteerism that that represents. Um, it is, uh, all of these things together make it um, a special part of greater Worthington's quality of life. 
Um, it has certainly been an important part of my family's Worthington experience, um, and knowing many of you, uh, I know it's an important part of your Worthington experience. As you uh, heard, our pools have a unique um, not-for-profit history being created and managed by Swim Inc. for decades with relatively little city involvement. I think on an early slide, there was um, uh, a reference to a $600,000 loan in 1996, a portion of which was uh, forgiven uh, more recently. Um, that's been about it. Uh, because of Swim Inc.'s work, because of their work, the city has not, like many communities, had to fund or maintain an outdoor pool. We've invested in a lot of other things to enhance the quality of life, an art center, uh, a senior center, an indoor recreational pool that many of you may have used at the city's community center. Um, and I would argue that together, all of these things um, represent something that few communities our size, 14,000 people have, which is an incredible group of civic assets that add to our quality of life. I would also argue that few city governments of our size uh, manage or invest in as many of these type of community assets uh, as we do. Uh, so well, here's one of our challenges. All these things make us unique and special. They also require a lot of investment and a lot of effort to run, uh, maintain, and periodically reinvest in. So um, I'm gonna get, we're gonna get into talking about what I see as the options that are before our community. But let me start by, I think the city finds itself um, at a time not entirely dissimilar from our pools and as I think you'll hear from Dr. Bowers, our schools. Um, it's the age of our community, it's the age of when we grew and previous generations made uh, many wise investments. Uh, there is a need to reinvest in so many of our civic assets. And the city is doing some things that are not as fun as investing in uh, new pools or in uh, new elementary or middle schools. We're spending millions on rehabilitating uh, aging water lines, uh, building uh, sewer lines, uh, investing in roadway infrastructure, and needed maintenance of aging buildings. Um, many of these things uh, are things we consider must-do infrastructure obligations that are really at the core of any city's responsibilities. And so because we have these major investment obligations um, in existing city assets that we've been responsible for, um, and they're our core responsibilities, and also because our financial structure has not has been built over the years um, around those assets and not around the assets of operating an outdoor pool as a responsibility of the city, there's no easy button to push. If there was an easy button to push on this issue, I think Mike or Rob or Trent or I would have all uh, pushed it. I think rather we, uh, we have some serious conversation we need to have um, about uh, what we're willing to do to invest in this asset. Um, if the city is to invest significantly in the pools, we're gonna have to consider several things. And we're gonna, I'm gonna talk about this this evening and then we're gonna ask for your input. Um, first, if, if we're gonna make a major investment, particularly as a city in the outdoor pools, I believe there have to be some trade-offs. And what I mean by a trade-off is we're going to have to consider reducing uh, our spending on other priorities, other projects, and potentially other quality of life investments. I, I think that's a reality. And I'll talk about that in more detail in a second. Second, um, if we as a city are going to take on a responsibility to make major capital investment that we haven't made before in Worthington Pools, um, new responsibilities, new investments may need to come with new revenues. Um, and what I'm talking about uh, more specifically is potentially increased taxes, uh, property taxes. Or we need to consider both, a combination of trade-offs, uh, reductions in things that we've previously planned for or prioritized, and some combination of new revenue. I think it depends in large part on the decisions we make uh, about the scope. 
here are some of the options that we are going to think about and we're going to discuss. And I've gotten away a little bit from my slides. In the area of trade-offs or things we might consider um, doing less of or reducing, um, possible options include uh, reducing the amount of planned expenditures for redoing McCord Park. Uh, McCord Park's at the, next to the community center and uh, one of our uh, goals in our parks master plan is to redo that park. Um, so reducing the investment that we have planned in that is one of the things we would consider. Reducing our planned annual investment in implementing the city's bicycle and pedestrian master plan. So we adopted a master plan that lays out a long range plan for improving bike and pedestrian facilities. Um, and one of the options would be to uh, reduce our planned expenditures in that area. A third area that we may consider and discuss is um, allocating uh, a cent about a half a million dollars uh, out of our what we call our fund balance. And that's a term for our rainy day fund, our savings. So using a little of the dollars that we've accrued uh, through prudent financial management uh, to allocate to this need. And lastly, a little more complicated option that we're looking at, uh, more complicated to explain. Um, as I talked about earlier, we're doing a lot of investments in older buildings, uh, life cycle maintenance projects, things like heating, air conditioning, um, lighting, uh, many of which gain energy efficiency savings. Um, We've been fairly conservative in that we don't allocate the savings until the project's completed and we actually realize those savings. Uh, but one of the things that I think we could consider is um, projecting those savings and redirecting those uh, towards the pools instead of uh, the city's daily operations. Let me back up one side. The combination of all those things I just described, which are going to be under discussion, uh, would generate about $3 million. That's a significant amount. Um, it's probably meaningful and may, would make a meaningful impact on the uh, outdoor pool project. But as you saw with the earlier slides, um, it may not be sufficient to address all of the goals or all of the needs. So if we decide, um, for instance, not to trade off some of the things I outlined, or it's determined that there is a need for uh, more dollars uh, to accomplish our community's aquatic goals or to achieve what we desire, then we're able to find in uh, reductions, then we really need to look at additional property tax millage, either in the city or uh, school district wide. Um, if a tax were levied in the city, uh, only city property taxpayers would pay. Um, there is authority under state law for the city and the schools to create what's called a joint recreation district. Um, such a district would have the authority to place an issue on the ballot and potentially if it were approved, a, a tax would be uh, in place that would be school district wide and therefore have more of the potential beneficiaries of the pools uh, paying for the reinvestment. Just to give you some property tax context, um, here are a couple of scenarios. Let's recognize that there could be many different scenarios and we could run uh, innumerable numbers uh, on, the, uh, on this. Um, but here is an $8 million investment in the outdoor pool and what it would cost an owner of a $300,000 home. And I'm going to walk and talk here for a second. You got me here? Okay. So with an $8 million estimate, um, a $300,000 home, the owner of that home would pay about estimated about $30 a year, 0.28 mils. Um, if it were a, a joint recreation district where uh, the district was essentially the boundaries of the school, school district. Um, if that $8 million uh, investment um, 
were funded through a city millage, meaning only the property taxpayers that live in the city uh, pay. Um, somebody who owned a $300,000 home would pay about $95 uh, a year. So you can see um, the benefit of, sp of spreading it out over larger numbers of uh, potential taxpayers. Um, so that's an outdoor pool option. Um, if you look at um, the outdoor pool plus a natatorium, uh, I just picked $20 million. It was in the middle, essentially, of the range that Mr. Keller presented. Um, and you created a joint recreation district. The estimated millage would be about 0.71, and an owner of a $300,000 home would pay about $75 a year. Um, these are just estimates. Uh, I do think it's important to share them as a point of uh, starting the conversation uh, when I raise the issue of property tax millage. So in summary, uh, what are our considerations? Um, one of the main questions is how do we balance the various needs of the community? Are we willing to sacrifice uh, or trade off, as I uh, said, some existing priorities in order to invest in Worthington pools? Um, is it time to consider additional taxes to make enhancements or uh, maintain uh, the aquatic portion of uh, our quality of life here in Worthington? And if we consider things like a tax increase to invest in the pools, who pays? Uh, and is there a equitable and sustainable long-term approach to addressing this, this challenge? I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Bowers, but I am looking forward to um, our dialogue in the, in the cafeteria, and I greatly appreciate your attendance this evening. Okay. So from a school district standpoint, um, Worthington Schools is, a, is super unique, right? So when I talk to my colleagues around Central Ohio, we have a setup in Worthington that nobody else has. Um, traditionally, school districts don't run outdoor pools, right? But in Worthington, the outdoor pool complex sits on school district land, um, and we obviously share a parking lot for outdoor pools with Thomas Worthington High School, and sometimes Summer months, that's okay. Sometimes you get a baseball that hits your car when you're parked at the pool. But that's kind of what we have in Worthington. Um, we have used, we have been beneficiaries as a school district of the natatorium since 1976. And we have really strong swimming, water polo, diving programs that have flourished in Worthington because of the natatorium since that period of time. Um, we use, our sports use about 20% of the natatorium time, right? So we use a significant portion of that time, but the community uses a significant portion of the natatorium time as well. Um, the school district's currently paying $125,000 a year in essentially rent to um, Swim Inc. so that we can use the natatorium space. We've also committed to pay $75,000 in a one-time payment, so which we paid this year, but probably ongoing um, for general maintenance and operational costs. So more than likely, the school district's paying about $200,000 a year to use natatorium time um, for those pieces. Previous to these conversations, um, we've always looked at Swim Inc. as, as one organization, an outdoor pool and an indoor pool. The outdoor pool obviously subsidized the indoor pool. Um, in our recent conversations with Swim Inc., they want to separate the outdoor from the indoor. That makes sense on some um, pieces for, for Swim Inc. Creates a challenge for the school district in figuring out where does the natatorium um, f fall from a funding standpoint. So we do have the funds to continue to operate the natatorium as is. And if there was a structural failure in the pool, we do have the funds to make a fix to that and keep it going for a period of time. Obviously, with a 40-year-old, 43-year-old natatorium, it is going to have to be scheduled for replacement sometime in the near future. 
okay? But if something were to happen in the next two years, Worthington Schools does have the ability to replace or repair the current pool and keep operations moving forward. Um, we talked about a joint rec district option. So this is the boundaries of the school district. If when you look at this map, you can see that in the green is the city of Worthington, the yellow is the city of Columbus, um, the pink is Perry Township, um, I think the blue is Sharon Township. So we work with four municipalities throughout Worthington schools. You can see where, where that school district boundary piece is. Um, a joint rec district is um, positive um, on one hand, right? So if we were to create a joint di rec district, we spread that tax out. It's a fairly reasonable tax asked to the community, and probably you get the, the best product in the end of a designed outdoor pool um, joined with an indoor pool, okay? From a school district standpoint, though, the joint rec district also has some risk. Um, as we look at this, this does tap into the, the same property tax stream that Worthington Schools um, uses for funding. So Worthington Schools is property tax funded. Um, we would have gone to the taxpayers in 18 for a property tax. We would come back, or a joint rec district would come back to that same voter base for a property tax. We would then plan to be back on for a property tax in 22. Um, and so we would have concerns that would say, would there be potential voter fatigue? Where they say, hey, you came to us, then the pools came to us, now you're coming back. Do we put future projects at risk if we go down this road? I don't know if that's a valid concern, but that's something that we're, we're trying to figure out. Like, is that something that we should be thinking about? Um, we're also scheduled, as I mentioned, to be on the ballot again in 22 and then in 26. So in 2016, Worthington Schools came together. We put a master facility task force together. We met for 18 months. Um, you saw phase one of that master facility plan come before voters in 2018, and our voters supported that. And with that, you're seeing a rebuild of Worthing Way Middle School, a rebuild and a reopen of Perry Middle School, a revamp of McCord Middle School, some renovations to Kilbourne Middle School so that we um, fix some of our aging facilities, but we also add capacity so we can move sixth grade from our elementary schools to our middle schools. That was phase one of our master facility plan. We've identified a phase two and a phase three that would come forward in, in these years. And when I put down 110 million potentially, plus an operating levy in phase two and another 120 million in phase three, those are probably the numbers as estimates, not official numbers, but as estimates that would be the debt limit that Worthington schools would have, um, the capacity for debt that we would have in those bond issues. And we look at what are our identified projects. So these are projects that we have identified that we know we need to fund in those bond issues. So we spend about $4 million on capital maintenance a year. We call those safe, warm, dry projects. Those are roofs for buildings, boilers, um, air conditions for buildings, windows, all those types of things to keep 19 aging schools running. So we need about $4 million there. We spend about $500,000 every year on new buses. So we have a bus fleet of 90 buses. We try to replace five buses every year so that we space out the age of our bus fleet. We expect a bus to last 20 years, but you don't ever want a period of time where all of your buses age out at the same time. So we need a stream of revenue for buses. Um, we need a, about a million dollars every year to replace technology. Um, we take about half of, of our technology money from our general fund, about half from bond funds, but we know we need a stream for technology. And then everything else on this list are identified projects. We have a maintenance building behind Evening Street. Some of you know where that building is that frankly needs replaced sometime soon because of its deterioration. Um, we have scheduled to look at replacement sometime in phase two or phase three of each of these other schools. And they were identified by the Ohio Facilities Construction Commission as buildings that um, would, be, would make more sense for us to replace versus try to renovate up to a statewide standard. So you see Thomas Worthington, again, all of these numbers for schools are estimates of costs, but a replacement of just the academic wings at Thomas Worthington, some sort of replacement that would probably keep the auditorium and the gyms um, would be 50 to $80 million. If we replace the whole facility, you're probably talking double 
um, that replacement cost. But we know Thomas needs to be on that list. And then we have a number of elementary schools that were built in the 1950s and into the early 1960s. And so you see Colonial Hills, Wilson Hill, Worthington Estates, Evening Street, and Brookside. All of those are scheduled in phase two or phase three of our plan. And then we've added the natatorium into that list. And we chose the $15 million number. Maybe that number is $10 million. But somewhere in there, we need, we need to figure out as we package a bond issue in 22, if a joint rec district is not created, does a natatorium go into that bond issue in 22? And so if I back up, if we have $110 million that we can essentially ask the community to bond, then we need to figure out what on that list fills that $110 million. If you do a Thomas Worthington, what do you pair with it, right? Um, and again, you're asking the entire community. And then there's a phase three. Um, and so those are the pieces that we look at and we say, as a school district, the joint rec district has some real positives, but it concerns us from a property task, tax, tax ask between 18 and 22, because that's coming back to our voters. If a natatorium is put into a future bond issue, um, it, it really is a matter of priorities. Do you put a natatorium before you replace a different elementary school? Do you put a natatorium before Thomas Worthington High School with a number of other elementary schools? Not all districts in central Ohio, only two districts, Upper Arlington and New Albany, have an, a natatorium. So it's one of the things that we have to, to look at is where does it fall on our priority list. So that's kind of the school's perspective, um, knowing that aquatics and swimming is really important to this community. Um, knowing that our programs have been really, really strong because we have a natatorium on site and our swimmers um, get really positive instruction because of that. So that's just the piece of what are we going to fund. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Knowing what the three of us have shared, Mike shared the condition, the understanding of where Swim Inc. is, Matt talked about the, the city's perspective on do we make trade-offs or should we assess some sort of other ta tax. I, as, um, as look from the school's perspective, really talked about here's, what, here's where we think potentially a joint rec district, here's what we think about when it comes to should it go into one of our future bond issues, knowing, by the way, that we'll be back to the voters in 22 and then again in 26. And obviously we would need voter support from the community to make those things happen. Um, we're going to ask you in just a minute to exit here. We're going to turn left outside the doors to go down to the cafeteria. All of our students that are here can show you how to get down to the cafeteria. When you get to the cafeteria, you're going to be directed to a table. Um, and our goal is for um, people to come together that maybe didn't come to this meeting together. So that you can have some conversation with somebody who may have a different perspective than you do. Um, and then we're going to ask you to chart on chart paper um, really your thoughts. So there's some questions that we want your thoughts. Every thought that gets written down on a piece of chart paper, we will take back and we'll post online so that you can see those thoughts. Okay? So anything that you put down, we'll make sure it gets transcribed, comes back out. We'll make sure that the city council sees it. We'll make sure that our Worthington Board of Education sees it. And we'll make sure that it's public on our website so that you can see that all of your thoughts were captured um, as you tackle this. We have some questions for you to go through. We would love for, you, for your thoughts and your answers on those questions. But then if there's something else you want to capture or share, please make sure you put that down also. Like we, don't, we certainly don't want to restrict the things that you share, okay? So with that, we want to thank you for coming. We will hope you join us in the cafeteria. You're just going to exit here, turn to your left when you exit the door, and head down to the cafeteria. We'll meet you there.